Hello everyone, in uh, today's video we're going to see how we can build a very simple artificial neural network in assembly language, so entirely in assembly language. In the previous video I've um, presented a blueprint for uh, such a neural network, I've uh, also presented several functions that are useful for building neural network in assembly language. So today we are actually going to assemble all the functions that we already discussed and implement a fully functional uh, yet very simple artificial neural network. But first uh, let's um, re remind a bit what uh, we need uh, for such a project. So we have an input uh, which uh, is a vector uh, in this particular diagram, I'm uh, considering an uh, input with uh, two values, x1 and x2. And we also include here uh, the bias value, which will always be set to 1. Uh, then uh, we have an output, also two values, and we have an internal uh, layer, uh, which is uh, composed of uh, artificial neurons 1 and 2. And we have a weights matrix, which in this case is size 2 by 3. And we have a forward computation, which is in this diagram. And again, I have a complete video about this, so if you don't uh, follow it right now, um, I will leave the link in the description to the previous video. I also create a playlist with all the videos related to the artificial neural network in assembly language. So uh, what happens in the forward pass? It's quite simple. We multiply uh, the weight, the weight matrix with uh, the input data. And remember, the input data also uh, contains the bias. So we don't need to add uh, the bias explicitly. And we apply an activation function, and in this case, uh, we are using the logistic or sigmoid activation function, which is uh, typically used in neural networks. And uh, that is all for the forward pass of the network. Then we need to compute uh, a loss. I'm uh, using uh, mean squared error, uh, which again was implemented previously. And we are comparing uh, the generated output values from the forward pass with the expected uh, values. And finally, uh, we need a backward pass where uh, we need to compute uh, the difference that will be uh, added uh, to the weight matrix. So we need to update the weights matrix. And this is the formula again. Uh, we discussed this in a previous video, uh, so I'm just quickly uh, going through this formula, uh, but it's probably easier to follow uh, starting from uh, this internal call and back uh, to this outer one. So uh, we need to apply the derivative of the activation function, in this case sigmoid, uh, then uh, we need uh, to compute the difference between uh, the output and the expected values. We need to apply a Hadamard vector multiplication. Uh, we need to multiply with uh, the scalar uh, eta. In this case, uh, this is the learning rate. Uh, and again, I know uh, if you haven't watched the previous video, then Maybe this is uh, difficult to follow, so in this case, please watch uh, the previous video with uh, the blueprint for the neural network. And uh, finally, we, we compute this uh, product here, uh, and uh, we compute the difference, uh, and we update uh, the weights matrix. So everything is according to this uh, formula here. So now let's. Uh, switch to the code. 
So what I have here is uh, the main file for the artificial neural network functions. Uh, I'm uh, creating here uh, these three functions, uh, layer forward, output loss, and layer backward. And these correspond uh, to what you just saw uh, in that presentation. Uh, of course, I'm um, declaring as extern the functions that we already implemented, and uh, they will be linked uh, to these new ones. So let's take a look first at layer forward. Uh, as you saw, this is quite easy to implement. Uh, we have here as input the input vector values, weights matrix, the vector size. So in our example, this will be uh, a very small vector, but uh, larger vectors can be uh, passed to this function by indicating the size in RCX. Uh, then we have the number of uh, lines in the weights matrix which uh, corresponds uh, to the uh, output uh, neurons. And we have the output vector. So remember, this is a very simple neural network with a single layer of uh, neurons. We don't have uh, multiple layers at this point. Uh, and uh, the output of this function uh, will be stored in memory, and uh, this will be basically uh, the activation applied to the weights matrix multiplied uh, by the input vector. So what happens here? Uh, I start by saving the registers, RDI and RSI, uh, and uh, they will be restored at the end. Uh, so maybe this is not always important depending what's happening in uh, application that's calling these functions. But I usually prefer uh, not to have side effects in my assembly language functions. So I always uh, save and restore the registers. So then I'm calling uh, the multiplication uh, function which will compute the weights times the input. Uh, and uh, then I'm calling uh, the sigmoid uh, function. And uh, you see here an uh, exchange between RCX and RDX, and this is uh, due to how uh, the sigmoid uh, function was uh, declared. Uh, if you don't remember that, you can uh, pause a bit and take a look at the sigmoid function, or you can watch this presentation and uh, look it up afterwards. So, as I said, the forward pass is very simple and uh, quite straightforward. Now, let's take a look at the loss computation. So, this is uh, actually even simpler. Uh, why? Because uh, we are just using the uh, mean uh, squared error uh, function implemented uh, for vectors. And since uh, the input is in the same format as expected by the function, uh, I'm just uh, doing a jump here. So there was no need to perform a call and another return. Uh, and remember, this is a procedure, so it has a return at the end. So this actually works. So maybe for some of you it's a bit weird, but uh, this works. So it's uh, just a jump to the computation of the loss. Uh, and why I have it here? Uh, because maybe in the future uh, I will implement other uh, losses. So uh, this will probably become uh, some jump table here, where we can check a parameter for the loss function that we want and execute a jump to the implementation of that particular function. So now the most uh, complicated part follows. Uh, we have here the backward pass. So we need to update the weights matrix using backpropagation. And uh, I'm implementing that formula that uh, you saw earlier on my slides. So 
again, I start by saving the registers that are modified in the function, and obviously at the end of the function, they are uh, restored here. And so what's happening? It's not really that big. Uh, I'm uh, calling the sigmoid derivative uh, in order to compute it. Uh, and uh, it will be stored in this TMP out. Uh, who is TMP out? Uh, well, it's just some uh, temporary space that I've declared here. Uh, remember, this is uh, currently a very small neural network, so I just declare space for like 100 values. Uh, but uh, in the future, uh, this will probably need to be increased or allocated uh, somehow more or less dynamically. But for now, this uh, is enough. Uh, okay, so the derivative will be stored in this uh, location. Uh, then I'm uh, computing the difference between uh, the output vector and the expected values. I'm applying uh, Hadamard uh, multiplication between uh, the output minus expected difference and the sigmoid uh, derivative. And uh, in this case, uh, the difference was stored in the output location, uh, which um, uh, is specified in RDI, so as a parameter here. Uh, and uh, so it's basically multiplying the output pointed to by RDI with uh, the TMP out storage, which uh, is at this moment in RSI. And the result uh, will be in output. So uh, the value that was computed here is now uh, overwritten uh, by this part. Uh, now we need to multiply uh, this part with uh, the learning rate, so this is eta. And again, if we look here, the learning rate is in EAX. So again, this uh, happens to correspond to how the functions were declared. So. Uh, it's enough just to call the function, no need to set additional registers. And again, uh, the result will be stored in uh, the output location pointed to by uh, the register RDI. Uh, now uh, we need uh, to perform the weights adjustment to compute the weights adjustment. Uh, at this moment, we uh, first compute the weights adjustment and then uh, the weights will be actually updated. So what's happening here, uh, I'm calling this uh, multiplication using an uh, outer product. Uh, and uh, because of how this uh, function was uh, defined, uh, it uh, will use the output in RSI, and uh, we want to store this in uh, output. So uh, I'm uh, moving the content of RDI in RSI. Here. And in a previous video, I've uh, presented this uh, outer product multiplication. Now, uh, finally, we need to update the weights, and uh, this simply computes a difference between uh, two vectors. So there would be uh, something like uh, output uh, equals weights minus uh, output and uh, uh, weights minus uh, the adjustment. So this is what's happening here. Again, TMPW it's, uh, is another temporary uh, location for storing the weights adjustment. And this is again declared here. Uh, with uh, 100 uh, places. So again, for a larger network, this value here needs to be uh, increased. And uh, this is all. I also have here uh, two functions that uh, allowed me to print the content of the temporary location. And uh, these are not actually uh, used at the moment, but 
I used them uh, just to check if uh, everything was uh, computed properly uh, during the development. So now let's take a look at the application. The application is here. Um, so of course I have a bunch of functions imported here but uh, actually let's take a look at the end here uh, where uh, I have uh, the data here. So what we have is uh, the values corresponding to the two inputs and the bias which is always one. So what we have here is zero zero and the bias one. And we have here the expected data uh, and we have, uh, as I said, two outputs, uh, one corresponding to zero, one corresponding to one. And in this case, I have a one here and a zero here. And how can this be interpreted is uh, when we have x1 equals zero, x2 equals zero, uh, the result will be uh, a one here corresponding to zero and a zero here corresponding to one. And then if we have 0, 1, uh, we have here uh, 0, and we have here a 1. If we have uh, 1, 0, uh, we have here 0, and here a 1. Uh, if we have uh, 1, 1, uh, we have here a 0, and here a 1. So this is just an uh, example of or function, uh, maybe you recognized it. So uh, if we look here again at the input, we have zero or zero equals zero. So this corresponds to this one here. Uh, and for the rest of the values, uh, we have a one, uh, which corresponds to this one here. And uh, also I have here the size of uh, this data. Uh, I'm dividing it uh, by 4 because uh, it's 32-bit uh, uh, data, 32-bit uh, floating point data. Uh, we have here uh, four rows uh, corresponding to four examples. Uh, we have three columns uh, corresponding to the two inputs and the bias. Uh, I'm also having here the line size. So uh, the number of bytes in uh, one line, this is number of columns multiplied by uh, four bytes. And similarly, uh, for the expected data, so we have again four rows uh, because for each input we need an expected output. And then uh, we have the expected columns, which is uh, two instead of uh, three, because here we also have uh, okay, so um, we also have here uh, space for uh, allocating the output data. So this will be the actual output of the network. Uh, we also have here space for the weights. Uh, so this is the weights matrix, will be uh, continuously updated by the network. And uh, we have some buffers here for displaying an int uh, floating point number. And we have some messages uh, like uh, input, expected output, output loss, weights, and the epoch number. Uh, if you don't know what the epoch number is, uh, in neural networks, uh, epoch is uh, a complete uh, a pass through the input. So now let's take a look at the application. So uh, as uh, usually in my code, I start with this OS init, which uh, depending on the operating system may uh, initialize some variables. For Linux, this does nothing. Uh, then I'm uh, printing messages. So I'm uh, displaying here the input matrix. So I'm setting uh, everything for the message, then uh, 
matrix data columns rows and I'm displaying the matrix uh, the expected uh, output matrix is also displayed and we start with uh, epoch number zero so at epoch start I'm uh, displaying the current epoch number and the epoch number is uh, obviously an integer so Wind 32 to string function again all these functions uh, I've discussed them previously and uh, they are displayed uh, on the console now uh, I'm starting uh, the data loop and uh, I'm just setting uh, the register R14 to 0 to indicate the start of the data uh, and uh, in R12 uh, data R13 expected data so what happens in the data loop uh, I'm uh, displaying the current input so now I'm uh, displaying uh, as a vector so it's one of the lines in the input matrix so it's uh, just the current uh, input I'm displaying the expected output again this is uh, the expected output associated with current input uh, and uh, I'm running the forward step and you just saw a bit earlier the implementation for this uh, layer forward and I'm setting uh, the registers accordingly uh, and it uh, computes uh, in uh, out data it will compute uh, the network output based on the current weights and the current uh, input data uh, now this uh, predicted uh, output is also displayed uh, again this is a vector uh, for this particular example we'll have two values uh, then I compute the loss uh, which is computed between the uh, output and the expected output the registers uh, for uh, expected output the register for expected output is R13, so let's have a look here. Uh, and I'm also displaying the loss. And remember, the loss is the mean squared error, which is a floating point 32 uh, bit uh, number. So I'm just calling float32 to string and then uh, console write. Uh, now I'm uh, uh, performing the backward pass. In this particular example, I'm setting in EAX the uh, eta, which is the learning rate, and I've set it to 0 0.1. Of course, uh, this uh, can be changed, and uh, maybe it would be better to have it in the data section, but uh, during development, it was easier for me to play with it uh, from here. Uh, and uh, as you remember the layer backward backward will uh, update the weights so following this call uh, I'm also displaying uh, the current uh, weights so uh, this point uh, the weights were updated in the layer backward uh, function and now we uh, are preparing uh, to move to the next uh, example in the data loop so uh, I'm uh, adding in R12 the line size uh, which is the line size of the input matrix of examples uh, and um, also in R13 I'm updating uh, to the next output which will correspond to the input in R12. Okay, so that's why both R12 and R13 are updated at this point. And uh, I increment R14, um, which is the current row. And I'm comparing this with the in rows uh, value. Uh, here, uh, maybe uh, it would have been possible to compare with end of one of these matrices but I just wanted to have it uh, more clear 
here. So uh, if we still have uh, data to process, I'm jumping to the data loop. And then I'm incrementing RBX. This is uh, the current epoch number. And uh, we can set here uh, the number of epochs uh, to run this uh, training. And, uh, I've just set it to 1000. Again, uh, probably in the future this needs to be moved to the data section. But I uh, just uh, set it here to play with the number easier. And uh, that's it. Uh, at the end of uh, this number of training epochs, uh, it will simply start with uh, call to the operating system exit. So it will train for 1000 epochs. And that's all. So now let's uh, try to build and execute this program. Again, I have a very simple script to build everything. It's just using uh, NASM Linux, uh, which was installed from source code in my own folder and uh, the linker Aldi uh, to link everything. I'm also allocating a stack size of uh, 1000 for executing. So, and uh, as you can see, there are no additional libraries involved. Everything is pure assembly language. And every file here was discussed in uh, previous videos. So let's just run this. And it generated this uh, file test uh, and end. So let's first run it. And that was it, 1000 training epochs. And at the end, uh, as you can see, we have a very good uh, loss values, 0 0.00002. And uh, for this particular input, 1, 1, uh, we have uh, the expected output 0 and 1, and we actually get 0 0.005 and 0 0.9949. So this is quite good. And we can see here the weights matrix. Now, if you, if you would like to see how uh, this displays across epochs, uh, we can use something like P. Uh, say run.txt so we can also see the output here but uh, everything was captured in this run.txt file so now uh, we can take a look and uh, if you remember I said I display first the input matrix with all the examples the expected output and then you can see here uh, we start with epoch zero, we have uh, the first line here, which is again displayed with uh, example zero, zero, the bias of this one. And the expected output for this would be one and zero. And uh, first we get the output 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Uh, this is because uh, the initial weights matrix uh, contained only zeros. And you can do the math, I actually did the math just to check everything. So, yeah, that's correct. And then following the first uh, backward pass, uh, we see uh, that we are, we are starting to have small updates to the weights matrix. And it goes on, uh, and uh, based on the different examples, it starts to update the weights matrix more. Uh, also, the loss starts to decrease. So we can scroll uh, through this file and see what happened at uh, different uh, epochs. So for example, here at epoch 46, uh, we start to see some change. Uh, also at this moment, the loss uh, actually increased. And this is something that happens with uh, neural networks. Uh, that's why it's important to play with the learning rate, it's important to run it with multiple epochs. And then uh, if you also go further, let's check where we are. Uh, the loss uh, now started to decrease. 
I'm not sure uh, where each, in which epoch we are. So uh, starts here epoch 98. And you can see how this gets updated. And so on. So uh, maybe uh, you'll have fun uh, trying to play with uh, this. So I think that's all for now. Uh, I will try to put the code up in uh, GitHub. And I will make a video when this happens. And we'll let you know how to actually download it, play with it, uh, maybe check some uh, other functions, and so on. So stay tuned and don't forget to like and subscribe to get informed when the next video is out. So see you next time. Bye.